Good morning, everyone. We are here out in Burnaby at the Wildlife Rescue Association. We've got Laura, we've got Anna, and we've got, ooh, we'll talk about the saw wet owl in just a moment, but Anna, it's been a record-breaking year for you guys. Yes, um, so far, well, compared with last year, um, we had way more intakes than, than uh, we've ever expected. Uh, we got uh, 5,533 patients, which is uh, about almost 1,000 animals <laughs> above um, we got in 2014. That's incredible, including rescues like this Sawet Owl, who, by the way, I believe is getting released today? Well, hopefully. Yeah, we have to assess flight okay. because um, she's a little, or he, I should say, is a male. Uh, he's a little fat. Uh, <laughs> oh, so. Well, no, you don't need to be rude. Like, we're, we're the ears to cover, but... <laughs> he enjoyed it. He's definitely enjoying his stay. Um, he did come, we suspect, probably hit by a car. So you can see the difference on um, both eyes. Um, this eye, we suspect that um, some nerve damage has occurred. Uh, he does still have have a site on it and uh, he did pass our uh, release assessment in terms of being able to hunt um, animals so now it's just a flight practice that we, we need to work I'm on. I'm trying to think bit. at this size because just for perspective look about the size of a phone here um, what would they hunt because they're barely bigger than a mouse. They hunt small mice, okay. mice, field mice um, and they generally wait on a lower perch on a branch of a tree and then they just talk the prey really quickly. Um, that's one of the reasons why they, their feathers are so fluffy. Um, so they have a very silent flight. Plus they have this adaptation here that you can see this little comb on um, the outside of, of the feathers. So um, the um, air actually just goes through and it's completely silent. So that's one of the adaptations that owls have. And we have quite a few saw wet owls. Where would people perhaps see them and what should they do if they believe one is in distress? So same thing when it comes to distress, give us a call. We're open every day from uh, 8 to 5. And um, it's just a matter of being aware of the talents. Um, we generally tell people just to on a, put a box over it without any um, contact. So Russ, uh, small, not necessarily vicious, <laughs> but definitely some sharp talents. Uh, Hopefully this little guy gets released today. Uh, for more details on how you can help uh, the Wildlife Rescue Association, you can check out their website, but oh, adorable. Yeah, small in stature, but clearly commanding the attention of the room right there. What a beautiful creature, my goodness. They do uh, great work there, the Wildlife Rescue, and we've got some conditions. Morning to everyone out here. We're in Burnaby at the Wildlife Rescue Association. We've got Anna, we've got Laura, we've got a snow goose we're going to show you in a moment. Laura, what happens when someone actually comes to the door with a bird for you guys? Well, we always ask them for as much background information on that animal as possible and that will help us treat them to the best of our ability. Then we'll give each and every animal a full exam and we'll try and f figure out exactly what's wrong with them and start them on a treatment plan. And then you do things like, um, well, x-rays yeah. um, for birds like this snow goose here. So what do you have here that you're seeing? What can you tell from that x-ray there? So you can actually see she, this girl here was shot. She, there's a pellet right there and you can see actually a fragment of a pellet here and that's actually caused a fracture in her ulna bone. And which... so here is the bird right now and uh, this is a little cast. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about the snow goose here. Okay. She's had some surgery from the wounds from the, the pellets and she's currently got a splint on that wing to help it heal. Uh, it's looking really, really good so far. Uh, the callus is starting to form. Everything looks nicely aligned, uh, but she'll still have it on for uh, about a week or so. And, yeah. And do we so. see a lot of snow geese here in Vancouver? We do. They're very common out towards the Fraser Valley, Richmond Delta. They have a very large population. All the snow geese we see here actually spend their summers up on Wrangell Island in Siberia. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> um, well, lots of great information. It's always an education here. By the way, they always need help. It was a record-breaking uh, um, rescue and treatment for the Wildlife Rescue Association. They need money, they need volunteers, they need food, they need all sorts of things. Go to their website for more details. We're going to take a little uh, break here on Breakfast Television. Snow geese? Is there snow in the forecast? I don't know. We'll find out from Russell <laughs> Kate coming up next. We'll be right back. I got guns. Well, he's a little snappy this morning. We're here at the Wildlife Rescue Association in Burnaby. We've got Anna, we've got Laura. Laura, um, how come he's snapping? Is he not, she's not trying to bite her necessarily, is he? Or is it a defense mechanism? He's definitely trying to snap. This guy's very, very feisty and he, he's trying to tell us he's ready to go, but he just had surgery a couple days ago. So he'll be here with, for us with, for a little while yeah. What kind so. of bird is this? This is a horned grebe. Okay, and tell us a little bit about them. 
So they're diving birds. Um, as you saw with the feet earlier, their legs are set very far back on their body and they're basically meant exclusively for diving. If these guys get onto land, they actually can't stand up or walk, so that's quite often how they'll come into care is they land on pavement and can't take off again. I'm looking at his eyes, and of course we'll probably have a hard time seeing him now with him biting, yeah. but oh. um, do they have very good vision? They do, yeah. They need to catch those all those tiny little fish down there, so they do have very good vision. And how did you come to get this one? This guy was found on the ground in downtown Vancouver, so... And is that pretty like, typical, given that they're diving birds, for them to be in the downtown core? They'll generally fly over and they'll see a patch of wet pavement and think it's a pond and land on it. And then since they're water birds, they can't take off from land. So. And so what kind of care is, is this uh, bird receiving and do we have kind of an anticipated release? Well, his suture sites look really, really good. So once he's finished his course of antibiotics, he'll spend a couple days outside in one of our big pools, and then he'll get to go back out to the ocean. So. And what are the best ways that people can help here at the Wildlife Rescue Association? Do you need transport? Do you need money? All of the above? <laughs> we definitely always need money and volunteers. So if you're interested, you can go onto our website and check us out there. Sounds like a great idea for you to help, especially if you love birds. <laughs>